everyone. Today we are celebrating our dads. Join us for family shabu shabu and get to know my dad a little bit. And make sure to stay till the end of the video because he shares his wisdom and his advice for young families and parents out there. If you're new here, I'm Carrie and this channel is all about Hawaii food and family. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Without further ado, let's hop right in. Shabu Shabu is a dish where people come together and sit around a pot of boiling water or broth and a plate of thinly sliced meats and cut veggies. They are slowly dipped into the pot and eaten with ponzu or other soy based sauces. It's a very special dish because everyone is cooking together while they are also eating together. It was first introduced in Osaka, Japan during the 20th century. The term shabu shabu is an onomatopoeia which literally means the sound swish swish. Since the meat is so thinly sliced, it would only be in the water for a short time and would sound like swish swish. To prepare, we head to Don Quixote, a Japanese grocery store in Honolulu for the veggies. My cousin Ali and I along with her husbands are planning this shabu shabu experience for the family so they bought half of the groceries for our dinner. Don Quixote is a one-stop shop because they literally sell a little bit of everything. Toys, clothes, food, electronics. We even bought our first shabu shabu pot from here. We thought this would be a perfect way to celebrate Father's Day because of the community aspect that a dish like shabu shabu brings to a family. Okay, hi everyone. Tonight is, uh, today is uh, Father's Day. Growing up, my dad held his family at the center of all of his decision making and he always made us feel like an important part of his life. And he was busy. My dad was a teacher in the Army Reserve, involved in the Buddhist church and owned an online business with my mom. But he also took me and my sisters to all of our practices and lessons and made it a priority to be very present in our life. We knew we could always count on him. You know, I guess one of the most rewarding things about being a dad is just a, the feeling that you have, that you get when you see, as you see your daughters um, grow up, you know, and that they, they have become really uh, fine young ladies, and then they've, um, they've been able to ha have partners in life that are really great people. That's the most gratifying uh, thing about being a father to see um, you know a family grow up it's not it's not a matter of just success money and fame and success and all of that but just the fact that they, this they are living to very happy and fulfilled lives so this is the meat slicer I got during quarantine so that I could slice up my own meat for shabu shabu got it off of Amazon for fairly cheap and the meat we are going to be using today is choice Angus chuck roast, um, pork loin, and pork belly. While Brett prepares the meat, Reed is busy preparing the vegetables which include bok choy, choy sum, cabbage, mushroom, and carrots. I got a Grandfather's Day card. Look at her writing. Her writing is oh. her penmanship is good. In addition to the meats, we also prepared ahi, salmon, and shrimp. Brett also prepared his own broth which we got a sneak peek into what his recipe is. My broth that I make, it doesn't have a name because I made it up. And just taste as I go. So first thing is hondashi. Second thing is show you a pot of water to boil. Sprinkle a fair amount in. So after you add the hondashi, I'm gonna add some shoyu. This is what's gonna give it your salt. There are no measurements, you just add any taste as you go along. <laughs> stir, you bring it to a boil. This isn't a broth for true shabu shabu, because shabu shabu is just water. <laughs> this is for hot pot. 
And for my broth, I like it a little spicier, so I'm gonna add some sambal, garlic chili paste. Add a little chili pepper water. This is homemade from my friends, grandpa. Looks like it needs more show you. Flavors are spicy, it actually needs more show you. That's good. It's show you -y, but it's spicy. But this is gonna be good if you put it in the water. So our food lineup included arabiki sausage, tofu, noodles, pumpkin, green onion, carrots, mushroom, cabbage, bok choy, and choy sum. And our seafood included ahi, salmon, and shrimp. And of course, we can't forget the beef and pork. I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can create a fun and enjoyable shabu shabu night at home with your family and remember that it's customizable to your preferences and the foods that you like to eat. Tonight they're doing shabu shabu and it, again it reminds me of the time my dad, Zenye Taira, he, he was a very social man too. He liked to invite friends and family over to his house in Palolo and he'd have like shabu shabu or yakiniku or something. That, they all sit around a pot and he'd be cooking and you know that, that's like that's like the kind of person he was so I guess the tradition continues so it's gonna be an awesome night tonight with the food looking forward to eating my dad's comment reminded me of grandpa Tyra someone who I didn't have a strong relationship with growing up because there was a huge language barrier since he didn't speak much English. He came to Hawaii from Okinawa when he was seven and he only went up to second grade since he had to work to help his family. My, my father, Zenye Taira, he passed away when he was 85. He was really a great man. I mean, when I, when I um, hear his story about growing up during World War II and because he was Japanese, he was being prejudiced against him, and even li living in Hawaii, where most of the people were Japanese. Uh, one example was that he had trouble getting a permit to be able to do a lunch wagon, so, but he kept going to the office. He went every day, day after day, until they gave him, <laughs> until they gave him a, per a permit to run, to run a, a lunch wagon. And eventually they had enough money, see it, and they they decided to have a restaurant, and they had a restaurant called Lucky Seven in in Kamaki. My, for my father, I, I really learned persistence, hard work, really hard, not being afraid of hard work. So without any hardly any education, he was able to accomplish uh, a lot. He was, he was a foreman at a construction site that built actually our state capitol building. So it was really a, a tough job but he really enjoyed it, despite the fact he had hardly any education. So, so my father really had been a great impact on my life. Okay, so we have Shabu Shabu night set up. We got uh, Ali and Brett's two um, split pots here with some of Brett's sauce and some water and kombu. We have our electric pot, actually two electric pots, one's Kathy's and then a butane pot down there. And then here is Brett's special shabu shabu with spicy sauce. So uh, we got some of that going. It's, it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait to start eating. We're all hungry. Okay, so this um, this customer is now gonna get some food. Thank you guys for doing another food trip. He's getting tofu. We have some vegetables. We're gonna get some meat now. Um, eating pork, I think, my backup. Cat meat. Yeah, we're gonna get some sausages, some um, tofu, a little bit of everything. Mm. Is this for the for the um, cooking? Yeah, this is what we're gonna cook. 
Okay. Wow. Looks good. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little more Mom, this is like overloading my plate already. Oh, I know. So this is gonna be for everybody. Okay, go ahead. It's just seeing everyone and talking to story and enjoying the food. Oh, enjoying the food. The salmon is good, yeah? It's just like falls off. Where's the salmon from? Mm. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Every few was this good. Watch your hands. Watch your hands. Ah. Oh. Yeah. It's fresh Atlantic salmon. Where is it? So we bought the salmon and the onion. No, no, not the onion. The salmon and the shrimp. Mm. This is the onion. Mm. Mm. This is onion. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah